I've chosen this address not because on Psalm 13, not because I know about the Psalms, but because over the past few days, perhaps weeks, months, I have really struggled with prayer. You know when things really get you down and you are unsure as to how to deal with it, and in all honesty, there seems no answer. I thought the best way to pray was to petition God for certain things or on good days to praise him and give thanks for something wonderful that has happened. I thought perhaps by just leaving it in his hands, then all will be well. At times, well, these are correct ways of doing things. But over the past few days and months after looking at the Psalms, I realised there is much more to prayer than that. Because when trouble stru struck the psalmist, they really let rip at God and told him in uncertain no uncertain terms what they thought of him. So I want to concentrate on one particular psalm, and that's Psalm 13. An all human life is there in this psalm. One of the most encouraging things about so many of David's psalms is their honesty. David doesn't hide his emotions in his writings. They are neither clinical nor academic. They honestly reflect his mood and his feelings, the ups and downs that follow the swings of fortune in his life. All human life is here. Joy, sorrow, faith, anger, bitterness, victory and despair, pleasure and pain, all there in what he is saying in this psalm. To be honest, David's terrible predicament was he feared that God had forgotten him. And be honest, has the thought ever occurred to you? Or have you ever been plagued with doubt? I'm asking these questions because sometimes we need to face them and, like the psalmist, confront God with them. David was plagued with doubt. All kinds of questions about God's goodness and faithfulness and perhaps even his very existence haunted him. This is what happens when we're struggling with our faith because it is being tested. It is in the mind the battle most fiercely rages. How long must I wrestle with my thoughts, says David. You've turned your back on me, he complains. You've forgotten me. You've abandoned me. We need to learn from David's honesty that when you come to God in the bleakest and blackest moments, as the hardest and most harrowing times, you can always, and I mean this, always be honest with God. It's interesting that while nearly half the prayers and hymns in the Psalms speak words of lament, their distinct voice is almost never heard in the life of the church. It seems we've lost the tradition of biblical prayer. Why? Well, perhaps we are not fully convinced that it's appropriate to pray this way. When we come to worship, we want to put our best foot forward. We want God to see us in a good light. We try to clean up our act before we pray. And, well, we've been taught all our lives, haven't we, that we must respect our elders. So we don't talk to God this way. We don't challenge him. But you see, this is not only an Old Testament tradition. In the, it is the witness of the New Testament. In the Gospel reading that we had today about Mary and Martha, and of course Lazarus having died, and Jesus not coming when they expected him to. And they are very honest with Jesus because they say to him in quite angry tones, I think, Lord, if you had been my if you had been here, my brother would not have died. They don't say, Oh Lord, we're glad you've come. Lazarus has died, but we know he's in a better place. No, they hold Jesus, Jesus accountable for what has happened. Lord, if you had been here, our brother wouldn't have died. How can they speak to Jesus this way? Well, they can speak to Jesus this way because he's their friend, because he, was, he is their Lord, and because they loved him, and they knew he loved them too. Mary and Martha can speak to Jesus this way because their quarrel with him was a lover's quarrel. They had learned it from the psalmist. You see, the psalmist let their disappointment be known. 
They feel free to speak the truth, to be honest with God. And out of their distress and disillusionment, they hold God accountable for what has happened in their lives. But let's hear the words of Psalm 13 once again. Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death. And my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But, this is what I love, but I trusted your steadfast love, Lord. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. The change that comes in the psalmist tone is not automatic or an inevitable part of this process like spring following winter's frost. The change in the psalmist tone comes as a surprise, as a gift, as only the grace of God can. We cannot control this intervening, transforming work of God, but as the people of faith have learned over time, it happens where we are willing to risk willing to be honest and willing to be open to God in prayer.